There's an unmistakable pattern to the India-China relationship for some years now. Blow hot, blow cold. Good ties alternating with periods when things get pretty bad. The warmth and the chill may not be entirely due to the person of Xi Jinping. As president, he has a broad, chiefly domestic agenda with a focus on ensuring the economy keeps ticking over, which ensures there is no unrest on the streets. It's not easy, particularly at a time when China's exports to the world are under pressure from protectionist sentiments, which brings us to Xi's external agenda. In terms of Xi's priorities, India may not necessarily rank very high. Trade volumes are not great and have been in China's favor for many years now. But that very deficit and what are seen as China's half-hearted attempts to address it have raised hackles here in New Delhi. Add to that China's bid to break India's influence in Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh and the Maldives. Its iron brother relationship with Pakistan, which includes overlooking its support of anti-India terror groups. China and Pakistan are all-weather strategic partners. We'll continue to strengthen coordination and collaboration on counter-terrorism issue. Our political mutual trust is unbreakable. No attempt to start the China-Pakistan relationship will succeed. Make no mistake, this is not Xi Jinping's personal agenda driven by some dislike of India. Even at the height of the Doklam standoff last year, the Chinese leader thought it fit to meet Prime Minister Narendra Modi. This is how leaders in fact behave. They talk to everyone, they keep their options open, see opportunities where those lower in the hierarchy may not. Those lower in the hierarchy, in fact, are the party apparatchiks, bureaucrats, the intelligence and security establishment which sees only through their narrow prism. What they see is a country far behind them in economic and military terms, yet challenging their quest for strategic dominance in this region. It's the institutional hostility of the Chinese state to India's refusal to bow to its power. India boycotted China's signature One Belt, One Road summit last year. It has joined hands with Japan in what could be a fledgling Asian NATO. India is building a defense and security relationship with America. The quadrilateral is bringing together the US, uh, India with the US, Australia and Japan to check China. Xi Jinping knows what's going on. He's the chairman of the Central Military Commission, also the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. So nothing the military does in China can be kept secret from him. He knew what was going on in Doklam. And although it may not have been deliberately initiated by his military, China's loss of face would matter to him. So he may have no objections in putting more pressure on India along the line of actual control or deepening engagements with India's neighbors. But there's also buzz in Delhi that a high-level visit from China is in the works. It could be a foreign minister, Mr. Wang Yi, perhaps even Premier Li Keqiang. In other words, Xi Jinping sees wisdom in keeping lines of communication open. But do not expect Xi to allow India into the nuclear suppliers group or stop blocking India's effort at the United Nations to sanction Jaish Chief Masood Azhar. As for backing India for a Security Council seat, no way. On the flip side, China collaborated in the move to put Pakistan on the grey list in the Financial Action Task Force recently. As I said earlier, blow hot, blow cold.